Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. My name is Ramandeep Singh and today I'm going to provide RBI circulars analysis for the month of December 2023 in the MCQ format. I have already done the analysis, the detailed analysis in the course. If you want to uh, take the course, the link is available in the description for Bank of Baroda MSME uh, exam for SBI, CBO and Central Bank of India credit officer exams. So, all links in the description mein available hai. and for the the, P, the, P, the presentation PDF for this se uh, session, I'll be providing that as well. My name is Ramandeep Singh and I have been teaching on bank exams today from last 12 years now and this is my WhatsApp number. If there is any doubt in your mind, you can always ask your doubts and I'm going to answer your doubts, okay? As per the recent RBI circular, the transaction limit for automatic payments via e-mandates has been increased to 1 lakh rupees for subscription to mutual funds, payment of insurance premiums and credit card payments. Credit card payments. Jo credit card ki payment hai, insurance premium ka payment and mutual fund ka payment. For these three kind of payments, the limit has been increased to 1 lakh rupees. For all other uh, payments, it's 15,000, Lekin is ki 1 lakh kar di ki hai. I hope you are already aware of uh, the e-mandates. One time, you have Netflix ki payment jo hai laga di, right? for the subscription of Netflix. Every month, 200 rupees kar jate hai, 500 rupees kar jate hai. That is automatic payment via e-mandate. The limit has been increased, right? From 15,000 to 1 lakh. Only for mutual funds, payment of insurance premiums and credit card payments. Take care. As for the RBI, uh, for the AIFs, or India Financial Institution, uh, just click on the correct uh, options. The lenders are allowed to invest in any AIF scheme. No, uh, th there's a very recent news. The lenders must exit and AIF investment within 30 days. The lenders, the financial institutions, uh, the banks and then BFC, they must, uh, you know, exit from an AIF investment within 30 days. And if they don't do the, the same, they need to make a provision of the same amount. If they don't do they provision to make a provision. So that's really important. If they are unable to liquidate within 30 days, they need to, they need to create a 100% provision. Trade transactions with the Nepal and Bhutan, they must be settled in Indian rupees only and that is really important circular, recent circular. All the trade transactions with Nepal and Bhutan must be settled in Indian rupees. And as per the latest, uh, the government securities, uh, the GSL guidelines, the GSL directions, which of the following is now, uh, are now eligible securities for lending and borrowings. Treasury bills are the recent additions. Now A and B both dono part hai, uh, the eligible securities under GSL. Uh, treasury bills are recently added. Abhi treasury, uh, treasury bill ko bhi add kar diya gaya hai. Which of the following entities are not eligible to participate in GSL uh, transactions under the updated transactions, uh, di updated directions? Pension funds, they cannot uh, take part. Okay. As per the latest RBI guidelines, when must registered entities implement the re revised penal charges, revised penal charges guidelines for fresh loans from 1st of April 2024, any fresh loan that is disbursed from this date, jo RBI ki guideline hai, penal charges ki, wo implement karni padegi, that I have already taught in the past, 3-4 mahine pehle aaya tha, usko dekh lehen ek bar, uh, until which date existing loans continue to operate under the old penal charges regime uh, any date before next renew or uh, the renewal okay but not later than 30th of june 2024 that is important uh, important any date before the next review or the renewal but not later than 30th of june 2024 until what date the payment infrastructure the pidf scheme has been extended it has been extended by two years now uh, by December 31st, 2025, those are extended kar hai. And which of the following is not a category of eligible, uh, of device eligible for PIDF subsidies under enhancement? Jo uh, jo uh, devices hain, payment karne ki, jaise POS ke jo device hota hai, jab kisi store pe jate ho. So, us pe government subsidy de rahi hai, right? The government is providing the subsidies. 
So uh, now that is available for QR code solutions, sound box solutions, point of sales, POS, in sub pay available hai. Mobile wallet pay, this facility is not available. This uh, subsidy won't be provided. How long does a customer have to escalate a complaint to the internal ombudsman after utilizing the internal grievance redressal process? So if you have a problem, if you have a concern with the registered entity, a bank or NBFC, and if the problem has not been solved within 30 days, 30 days you have waited that your problem is not you go to the internal ombudsman okay, for the solutions. And what is the minimum term of office of an internal ombudsman? It's three years. The uh, minimum term hai for the internal ombudsman and he can be reappointed for, for one additional term. That is the maximum. Reappointed for one term maximum. How often must the internal ombudsman must submit the reports to the RBI? He must submit quarterly report to the RBI. Very important NSFR uh, framework. As per the revised NSFR framework, which of the following is not considered as National Development Bank NDB? Uh, State Bank of India. Recently, uh, the NAFID has been, uh, you know, uh, have has been uh, a NAFID and Exim Bank. They are uh, recognized as National Development Banks. NAFID and NAPFID. New addition hai NAPFID and Exim Bank. Okay, now they are NABAR, NHB, NAFID and Exim Bank. These are the National Development Banks. Uh, what is the revised? required stable funding the rsf uh, factor for unencumbered loans to ndbs with a maturity of one year or more it is now 65 percent it used to be 100 percent but it's come karke 65 percent kar diya gaya hai the rsf factor required for unencumbered loans is 65 percent it used to be 100 percent and according to basel 3 definition what is the primary purpose of nsfr the purpose uh, is to measure the ability of bank to, with, uh, the, to withstand the liquidity shocks. In case of any asset liability mismatch, kuch aisa, kuch ho jata hai, then uh, they, sh they should be able to withstand. Okay, the banks, they should be able to withstand. That is why the NSFR is there. So students, I hope you like that today's uh, session. I have analyzed all the RBI circulars and then I wrote the MCQs. All these MCQs I wrote myself and I provided those MCQs to you. If you find any fault, if you find any mistake, I'm open for that. Uh, just tell me the mistake or tell me the problem. If you are unable to understand, just let me know. That will help me to improve the way I teach. That will help me to improve my content. Uh, eventually, that will help you to crack your exams, right? And you can join the Bank of Baroda Scale 3 MSME course in which uh, we are providing the video classes, the notes, quizzes, the test series, the doubt clearing session. Test series has already been added to the course, right? Uh, the SBA CBO course is also available on bankexamstudy.com in which we are again providing video classes, notes, quizzes, and the test series, right? And uh, the list of our successful students, all these students that took our courses in the past and they cracked their respective exams. And I'm really, really happy for them. All these happy faces, they took our courses in the past and they cracked their respective exams. I am really, really happy for them. So students, if there is any doubt in your mind, please ask your doubts and we are going to answer your doubts. And that's all for today, students. Thank you and have a very nice day. Bye-bye.